Ray Colton, it's, it's one of the barometers I guess I use to, to get an idea of how firewood is selling. And uh, Normally he has a pretty large pile of, of firewood logs on his lot. And I noticed this morning when I came down by there, he's probably got less inventory than I've ever seen there. Well, that's good. But some of that wood, uh, I think quite a little bit of it is, is going in Massachusetts, Connecticut. Yeah. State buildings are using more wood chips. There, there really has become a, a, uh, a system in place now that when state buildings starts looking at new buildings or refurbishing old buildings, that they're looking at wood energy as a, as a potential uh, way of heating those buildings. It didn't, the, the, um, the state house complex, the downtown Montpelier is, uh, all the state buildings are heated by a central boiler plant that, that uses wood. How many tractor trailers would they use a day in the winter? I mean, more, more than one or? Uh, oh, yes. More. Yeah, probably, I'm eight, trying to think of what the, ten? The, the volume over the course of the winter is. Um, well, I was thinking per day or? I, I don't think it's it's quite that high, but it's it's probably uh, a couple. Right. Meadowy Lumber Company, and I'm going to say, just guessing, they may have five acres of buildings and kilns and things, and they eat the whole plant. They they will on a, on a day when it's it's 10 to 20 below, they they will consume the equivalent of say 55 to 60 cords of chips. That's that's a, a lot. Of wood. If that was vans, that would be. Uh, Six, six uh, mm -hmm. tractor trailers of, yeah. of chips in a day. So, and I'm just assuming that Montpelier's got to be bigger. Yeah, it, and it depends on the um, the boilers in, at the Montpelier plant are are old, essentially converted coal boilers. Mm -hmm. They tend to be a little less efficient than some of the newer stuff that's that's being built now. The the system in at Mount Anthony will certainly be a much more efficient system. Mm -hmm. But they'll probably burn in the vicinity of a thousand tons uh, a year, a little more, a little bit less. I'm I'm not familiar with the size of the building, but uh, that's my understanding. Uh, a tractor tra load, tractor trailer loader chips, it's probably 25 or 30 tons, depending on the size of the size of the trailer. Okay, so what would be the um, convert? How many gallons of fuel oil would that be? I'd have to look it up. Okay. I'd have to sit down and figure it out, Jim. But the main thing, it stays in this little yep. community. It yep. stays in a small area. Yeah. What I can tell you is even at the the average price that's being paid now for, for chips by uh, schools is around $29 a ton. Um, and that's a pretty good price for, for the sawmills. But when you convert that to equivalent dollar value of oil, it comes out to oil that's worth about 50 cents a gallon. So you'd have to be buying oil at significantly less than what it's costing yeah. right now to to make the numbers. So this same. isn't anything to subsidize. This makes economic sense too. It it makes economic sense. There's there are some advantages for the schools uh, through state aid education. Mm -hmm. uh, in the last couple of years, the uh, the legislature increased the state aid payments for renewable energy systems to 50 percent of the cost. So by using wood or solar or wind power mm -hmm. uh, that could be installed in, at a school, um, the schools do get a, a better break from, uh, from state aid. Well, it looks like that's uh, kind of headed in the right direction. But there's, there's one area that I've always had a concern about, and that's, I, I call it just the, the value added to the forest products that, that leave the state of Vermont. Um, many never to be seen again, but others to be seen again too. And uh, uh, in particular, when we take generally soft wood logs, building components, and uh, they are truck sold into Canada, manufactured, returned, and sold back to us in a competitive way, I don't understand how this, this can happen. The, the whole softwood lumber issue with Canada is pretty complex, and it's, it's beyond the scope of my knowledge as well. Uh, I do know that um, the plants, the, the sawmills that, they, that are across the border in Canada, 
uh, are very high tech sawmills. They've got they've got new equipment, um, a lot of computerized equipment, uh, and they're big production sawmills. And we really, throughout New England at this point, uh, there really aren't the spruce sawmills, the stud mills. Um, that there used to be. Now, a lot of that production softwood is being, uh, a lot of those big production mills are in Canada and throughout the, the Northeast, uh, a lot of our softwood is going in Canada to be processed. Um, the Canadians have a little different way, I think, of looking at, at things as a, as a public policy. They seem to support uh, rural economies maybe more than we do in the United States. Um, they're much they seem to be much more interested in supporting uh, the economies of those small towns uh, across eastern Canada uh, and, well, really throughout the, throughout the country. Um, so that they're, I mean, I don't know what, what all the economic advantages are. There, I assume there must be some, but uh, certainly the, as a policy, the Canadian government is, is interested in keeping those mills going. Mm -hmm. I think that's pretty fair to say. Um, all, all anybody has to do to see that is just uh, be, be driving on 91 or in New York or over in uh, mm -hmm. the Northway and uh, look and see what types of load of wood type things are going mm -hmm. north, their logs going north, their lumber coming south. Yeah. You see it every, every day. Yeah. In fact, it's the same truck. Yes, yeah, the same truck. Same truck. Yeah. Many of those mills, they come down, deliver their lumber, lower. go somewhere else, mm -hmm. loaded both ways, which is yeah. very efficient too. Yeah. Yeah. The majority of log trucks in Vermont travel probably a little less than 50% of their miles with a load. Mm -hmm. and you still have the highway taxes and the fuel you're burning and everything else. Yeah. It's highly efficient to do things in that manner. Yeah, yeah and certain, and there's there are logs coming certainly from throughout Vermont, but also from, uh, you hear the same things coming from folks in Massachusetts and Connecticut, um, and even farther south. Um, Truckloads of mulch going south, uh, actually in closed vans that you'll see coming back north with logs loaded in them. Uh, so there, some of that stuff is going, going a considerable distance, but as you say, Claude, you know, having that backhaul of logs makes the whole process more economical for them. And the employment and the value added that Claude started about is, is um, happens in Canada with, with our logs and the lumber we buy. But we, we don't just have, have Canada. If, if we take a, a French Finch Prime pulp company in Glens Falls, New York, and we have to say that because we don't have any uh, pulp mill in Vermont anymore that operates, I guess. Um, and they're a big landowner in the Adirondacks, and for almost the past two years, they have found it was cheaper to buy pulp out of South America than it was to get it 100 miles away on their own land. Mm -hmm. And International Paper Company has, has done that. Um, there's a, a company right here in, in Vermont that's really partners with another company, and they always kind of worked hand in hand, and somehow economically things didn't click, and now one of the main products being used there is Russian plywood. Mm -hmm. um, it, I, the whole global economic things I, I don't understand. That when you can go halfway around the world and get something um, that, that's cheaper. Of course, a lot of it is, is labor in other third world com countries or things is, is very much less. I do know maybe there's a little bit of a trend there that, that pulp mills of uh, biomass is, is cheaper by about about half the cost in the southeastern United States, plus plants that operate down there have less energy costs. They don't have to heat as much, plus mm -hmm. the rates are less anyway. I think wages maybe isn't too much different. Um, I'm not sure about taxes or what, but there seems like there's all kinds of incentive for someone to pick up from here and move because of uh, the bottom line which companies are looking at closer so they're going to have to if they're mm -hmm. going to survive. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's... Well, it gives something to work on tomorrow, mm -hmm. the next day, the end of the week to solve that. And uh, the, the costs of doing business, 
and uh, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I just mentioned that people read little blurbs here and there about the workers' comp mm -hmm. thing, and uh, uh, I, I've just seen what my renewal is going to be, and uh, in, in round figures for one employee working in the woods, the premium for workers' comp, that's no other insurance, it's just strictly workers' comp, is about $10,000 per person per year. That's a big chunk. Mm -hmm. And that's to handle medical bills in case of an, in an case accident? In case of an accident. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and certainly we've all seen increases in medical insurance. Uh, the, I know the sawmills in the last year or so since 9-11 have seen a, an astronomical increase in, in their liability fire type insurance that they're paying on their on their properties as well. Now I have mine broken down from what I can get a terrorism coverage, hmm. uh, which isn't that expensive, but I can also opt not to have it. Yep. I don't know if echo terrorists fall into that or if it has to be an imported terrorist. Well, uh, I guess we're getting along toward uh, the end of the hour here. But time sure goes goes fast, yeah. and uh, we certainly uh, appreciate you coming down. Um, one other thought I had along lines here: uh, Are there some publications that uh, some of the listeners out there might might enjoy seeing? That, uh, There's several publications that that we put out that uh, that might be of interest to people. Uh, we produce directories of, of wood manufacturers, sawmills, and uh, what might be of interest to uh, some of the private landowners in the area is the portable sawmill directory that we put out. Um, these give some basic information about each of the companies that, that choose to be in the directories. Uh, some names, addresses, contacts, uh, the products they produce, the, the products that they use. Uh, they're really designed to be used either by by the public or by cust potential customers, um, be it you know a logger that's looking for a place to sell logs or someone that's looking for wooden clothespins, for example. Um, so we produce we produce those, and those are available. All all the stuff's available free of charge. Uh, there are several uh, wood energy publications that we put out. There's a couple of different fact sheets for uh, folks that are burning wood at home on, uh, on operating and, and choosing uh, wood stoves. There's a, a really nice uh, guide for wood chip heating systems. Um, this is one of the things that we, we try to make sure that us, anybody that's involved with a school, for example, that's interested in wood chip heating systems, uh, try to make sure that they have a chance to, to have one of these, a copy of one of these publications. This really gives a lot of the nuts and bolts, um, a lot of good basic information for folks uh, to better understand how the systems work and, um, and how they're put together. And then you know, we talked a little bit about the, the economic impact of um, the wood using industry in the state and where the wood's going. There's two things that uh, the Northeast State Foresters Association has done recently. The, the association is essentially the state foresters from Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, and New York State. And uh, they work together on cooperative projects that, that benefit the, the whole northeastern area. Um, one of the things that they've done is this publication on the economic importance of uh, the forest products industry to Vermont. They've done one of these for each of the four uh, states as well as one for the whole region. And the other thing that's just hot off the press is this uh, wood flow study that actually looks at the production, um, how much wood's harvested in each of the states, how much wood is processed in each of the states, and essentially where the rest of it goes. Um, you know, we talked a little bit about wood going to Canada, but there's an enormous amount of wood that travels between states, between Vermont and New York, and between Vermont and New Hampshire, um, as well as as wood that goes into Canada. And this gives, can give folks a little better understanding of, of uh, how that all works and where the wood goes. 
Well, those uh, look real interesting. I'm aware of a couple of them, but most of them I haven't, haven't seen at all. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, we should uh, wind this up and uh, thank you very much for, for coming a long, long ways down here from Hardwick, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you very much for the invitation. I okay. enjoyed it. And uh, come and visit us again sometime. Maybe. Uh, thank you, Claude. Maybe you. Thank you, Jim. Be down to Bennington School and see what's yeah, going on. Yeah, that like the first match or something. Or... Thank you. <laughs>
However, let's see, and we have huckleberry filling. What's that? I don't know. That's what this thing is in a mug. Huckleberry filling. Oh, and we're going to put everything in this great big pot here? Yeah. Okay. Eventually. You know, you forgot something, Bruin. I did? What did I forget? Uh, hold There's on a, a candle. Then we're not going to put a candle in it. Hey, do you think we should light the candle for atmosphere? Check this out. It oh. says naturally tenderized octopus. Popo. Octopus? Octopus what? Octopus popo. Popo? What's an octopus popo? Uh, Is that the foot? The leg? That's something that lives in the ocean that has lots and lots and lots of arms. No, I know what an octopus is, but what's popo? I don't know what that is. Is that the, is that the It's the octopus legs? in some form of another. Oh, maybe it's seasoned octopus. What do you think, seasoned? Hmm? Yep. Okay, how are we doing with the leeks? You finished? No. No? Well, if you can work faster, I'd like to see you. Oh, I can. Hold on. He, he's got to do at least more than six. Because I did six. Go ahead. And now I'll do two at a time. For the coup de gras, we'll do them all at one time. See, that's easy. You know what? Maybe I won't even bother with a stir. This tastes pretty good. Mmm, -hmm, yeah, good. Mm. Okay, what are we going to do next? Well, Let's see, we have them all chopped up. And what does the book say? It says we should add a couple of uh, teaspoons of olive oil. Olive oil is right over here. Right next to the big bear. Time for the big bear? Not yet. Not yet. Somehow you seem a little over eager for that big bear. Well, that's what makes leek soup, you know. <laughs> you don't say. Okay. So in goes some olive oil. Oh, I like the way you measure. One teaspoon, there we go. Whatever She case. measures the way I like to measure. Just a handful here and a handful there. By the way. Paw here, paw there. We should put those leeks in, shouldn't we? Well, that's what makes the leeks stew. There she goes. Here go the leeks. I guess maybe I should turn around so I can see what's going on. And go, hey, what was that big thing? Well, that was the garlic. That clove. was some of the garlic that we were there we go. to put in. Okay, what else? What else? What's next? Olive oil, leeks, garlic. Uh, the menu. <laughs> Tortellini. Tortellini. Bag and all. Well, am I really supposed to put the bag in, too? Oh, it says the whole bag. Don't you put the bag in too? Oh, I get it. You have to open it. Yeah. Okay. And what else? Well, the spoon isn't actually going in it, but we probably should stir stir yeah. our soup. Do we have to put some water in there? Uh, beer, 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 the beer, the beer, the beer, the beer, the beer, yeah. big beer, big bear beer. Say that ten times. Yeah, say that ten times, Bruin. Ten times. What's so hard about that? No, you were supposed to say Big Bear Beer ten times. Okay. I'll count for you. Big Bear Beer ten times. There. Oh, God. You know, sometimes for a bear, you're not too smart. Well, bears are very intelligent, you know. I think. Do you think? Are we intelligent? You're a bear. How come you can't think? Like well, a bear. Uh, I've been around people too many times. I think we're supposed to put in more of this than water. What do you think? Well, I I don't know. Where's the recipe? I told on the menu earlier, but I meant to say recipe. Bears get confused like that. Hey, I'm still eating these green leaves. Ah, uh, where's the recipe? 
28. Beak soup. Okay. Oh, big bear beer. It calls for two cups. Two cups of beer? Two or cups. two cups of bear? Beer. Okay. And water, we can need water in here too. I wasn't paying attention when you read. Yeah, I know you weren't. So we need to put some water in there. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay, okay. What do you think, Erwin? You think that'll work? That will do fine. Okay. Yep. Let's fill her with some water. You know, this is a nice kitchen you have here. Well, for somebody that doesn't spend much time in one, I guess it works pretty good for me. Yeah, I this this is nice. How long have you had this kitchen? As long as I've been cooking. Not very long. Oh, okay. Hey, can, can I turn the, the, the stove on? I don't know, Bruin. That might not be such a good idea. You might catch on fire. No, oh, let me turn the stove on. Okay. Well, the knobs are over here. Okay. I can reach over there. Okay, Danielle, I guess it's time to, to light the fire, right? You say so. Yeah, I want to light it. Can I light it? Okay, put the top on it and stand back, Teresa. Oh, no, stand back, Danielle. Let's see. Thank you. How, how do I do this now? Just push the button. Okay, push the button. And buttons pushed, and look at that! Oh, we got flames, look at this! My God, what? Bruin, what have you done? You well, well, it's cooking, like, I mean, you got a marshmallow? God. Hey, this is pretty neat. Nice going, Bruin. Now you've, like, started the whole fire, and look at this mess. Well, look, look out, look out. I mean, boy, we, we got, we're going to have hot leeks, and we're also going to have marshmallows. We're going to have hot bear if you don't find a way to put this fire out. Well, that's how I Maybe that'll help. Well, I, maybe if I turn this knob off, do you think that'll work? Uh, to try, Can't hurt to try there, it. There, I did it. That knob did it. Oh, okay. goodness. Maybe, maybe I'll let you do the one. Bro, and I am never letting you in another kitchen ever again. <sighs> oh, boy, that's really looking good. Mmm, it smells excellent. Well, you know what, Danielle? I what? think we're about ready. We can just put the top on this. And we'll take it up to Bear Town, and we'll have all my relatives join in on the leek stew. <laughs> have a good spring. I can't wait to see what a whole bunch of drunken bears look like. That ought to be very interesting. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> okay. The month of May. May. No. Go down time, man. Go down some leaves again. And where are we today? We're in Manchester. Manchester, the uh, hidden song. The Northshire. And uh, you are Jim White. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. So Bennington County Forester yeah. still is for the past multi decades yeah. or whatever. And I'm Claude Duran still. And uh, we're going to be meeting Richard Sweeney here somewhere I today. I just heard the mill start up. Oh. Hey, here comes Come on, Richard. Richard. Right here. Welcome. Welcome to the show. Yeah. Thank you. The start of a new career for you, Richard. Yeah. <laughs> well, tell us uh, how you got started with uh, everything here. And uh, I know uh, I've spent quite a few years working with uh, Scott Mayer, who everybody in Manchester knows. And uh, so you've never been very far away from wood in your life. Uh, no. Uh, pretty much always. Except when you're fishing. Yeah. 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 Then I try to stay right away from it. <laughs> um, well, we started out doing firewood and uh, nights and weekends after we, you know, after we finished logging during the day, and, and then we decided we wanted to try something different. So I took a little coaxing, but I talked my wife into letting me buy a mill. It's, it's been great. How many years you been sawing? About, uh, this is five and a half now. Yeah. And who's your customers? Um, we have a lot of walk-ins off the street. Yeah. You know, they can come and they can buy a, 
two by four, one or a dozen, or you know, however they, whatever they want, and we 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 specialize in whatever they need. You know, they can call us in any dimension, odd yeah. sizes. If they want a three by seven, you'll make them. Yeah, and then we have uh, like the Jamaica Cottage shop he's a he's a real big customer he buys what, an awful lot of stuff what do they make um like outbuildings for garden shops oh uh, they're real pretty buildings. yeah yeah they're, they're real nice and, yeah very if yeah, we're very pretty yeah for anybody's backyard yeah yeah, yeah. and they're, he, they he, construct them outside and then it's moved usually yeah all one thing. yeah they they build them right there on stilts and back a loader under them and yeah. uh, truck the trailer and move them and, they do a lot of real big ones that they they actually build on site too. They go all over. And are you mostly softwood here, but you got a few hardwoods, so you saw anything? Yeah, yeah. And yeah. yeah, we do. Well, that's how we paid for the personnel. Saw in Cherry. Yeah. And that was really good. We do a lot of custom sawing of hardwood. Yeah. And, Is this a post and beam? house or building here? Or? <laughs> no, actually that's going to be a sawdust bin. <laughs> there, there's some old uh, white pine and red pine logs that were really wormy and uh -huh. and so we're going to we're going to build a sawdust bin and then we got a couple farmers that'll will take the sawdust from us yeah. to get rid of it. Uh, sawdust is very valuable to some people. Yeah. I mean they need it to survive. And, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so that, you know, it helps it helps us get rid of it and and um, works out good. Yeah. So and we, we're going to make it look kind of like a log cabin shed, you know, when it's done. That'll be the fanciest one ever. <laughs> and your uh, uh, saws are what, what are what are they called? Uh, they're uh, wood miser. Uh, band mills, portable band mills. Um, you know, you said something, Richard. I just want to interrupt you a minute. But you said my wife let me buy bought a bought a mill, buy yeah. a mill, and every guy needs a mill. They just can't convince their wives that they need them. Yeah. I mean, she wants a cupboard or something, and say, well, I need a mill. I can do it. Uh, yeah. yeah. All I have to do to get my mill is can is take her fishing. Yeah. It okay. looks like two mills. Yeah. 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 Well, the one, it worked with the one, the first one was, it, it worked so well that it started out as a weekend project at nights and it worked so well we ended up getting so busy that we ended up buying two and, and John Doerr had a farm tractor once and then he got another one and, uh, yeah. and now he's got a hunter. Or something. Yeah. <laughs> well, will you show us around, Richard? Maybe we start with the logs and a yeah. pile or what do you have? Pine here is all off our own jobs uh -huh. that we caught. This cherry is off our jobs. And the hemlock, that come from uh, Willie Crandall. Uh -huh. And Claude brings me logs. How, um, how long a piece can you handle? 20 feet? foot. 20 foot. Yeah. Up to 35 inches around. Wow. Pretty good size log. And then resulting in what with That will take care of most everything. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The widest we can come out with in the end is 24 inch. 24. Yeah. And, uh, that, uh, that gets heavy. Yeah, they yeah. do. <laughs> do you have a market for that? Oh yeah, yeah. all I can cut. Yeah. I mean for those wide, the 24 inch? Yeah. 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 Something go up pretty fast when you're kneeling down something 24 inches at a time. Yeah, it know? does. Yeah. It covers some distance. Yeah. <laughs> and like those, those, those ones there, hemlock or 18 footers, we, we do those uh, a lot of beams. Uh -huh. And build bridges, skitter bridges. We built a couple of those this winter. So this is fun, right? Yeah, I mean, it, everything custom or a lot of I, I, Yes, it is. I I really love it. Right. It's, and these band saws leave a lot smoother board, don't they? Than a yeah, um, saw. it's almost waste, finished. Less waste yep. than sawdust. Yep. 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 Yeah, yeah, um, You gain you gain twenty percent. Really? Yeah. You know, it's not all going on the ground in the sawdust. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's, that's, uh, you got a uh, an eighth inch blade turf on these as compared to a quarter inch. Mm -hmm. And 
And then do you, do you plane wood to it? Everything rough? Uh, no, everything's rough right now. Um, eventually, we want to get into that. Doing that. But. Then you have the sawdust that we spoke about. There's a, a home for that. Yeah. And uh, then there's still slab wood and yeah. trimmings, things like that. And where does that all end up? Well, we used to we used to burn it all. And well, we ran ads in the paper and gave a lot of it away. Anybody that wanted it, and if we had to haul it, we charged a little bit to, you know, pay for the fuel and yeah. help pay for the guy. But uh, most of the time, we just gave it away, and uh, we still do. And it's the majority of it's fine in hemlock. It's, it's good, good sugar. For, yeah, good for sugar makers. Yeah, yeah. And all this stuff that's banded right there, that's all going to sugar makers. Yeah. And now we're. We're in the process of getting a slab grinder. So we you chip it. Yeah. yeah. And then who wants the chips? Landscapers. Landscapers, and we're hoping to get uh, some kind of a contract with like uh, a place like Springfield High School or the Burlington Power Plant that uses it for okay. making power. electricity yeah. and heat and power. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, that's one of the things we got to look into. But yeah. If we can't burn no more, they don't let us burn. So. Well, there's some, I would call them ugly pieces of pine. Is that what you call them, there? Yeah. Right there. Coals, he used to call them. Coals. Yeah. And uh, you're going to make something out of them, probably. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, now what, do you, what's, what are you going to make out of that? I mean, it'll be something wide um, and knotty. And what we'll try to do on the ones that will fit, that we can saw through and through, we'll saw them two and three inches thick. And leave the sides on them for tabletops. Okay. And, Rustic um, tables. Yeah. And yeah. some of them, if they're too wide, then we'll just we'll square three sides and leave one side round, and then you can come out with a 22 to a 24 inch wide, and then they can butt two together okay. for making tables. Tables and, and benches. And, yeah, yeah. They make very attractive things. Yeah. 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 And, yeah. Like I got, there's one there that's even too big for us to saw and, and when I get them like that then I I just save them when I get enough I throw them on the truck and they go to a carver. Yeah. Oh, okay. Or a bear coming in like that. Yeah. 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 Totem pole or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, this all this is all fine lumber and the stuff that's not stickered is hemlock. Why don't you stick hemlock? Well, it, it nails better if it stays a little green. Oh, it does. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And if you if you stick it, it dries out. So then you you almost have to drill it to get a nail in it. Unless you're using an air nail, or you know, a lot of people don't have them. So. Yeah. Now, here we are the the first week of May, and uh, and there's pine lumber sitting out there, stickers and things. What will happen to that as the summer progresses with the heat? Well, um, it'll get a lot lighter, and it, you know, it'll as it's drying, it's air drying now, and uh, you lose some of the top boards because they kind of curl and twist on it and stuff. And, but where it's going, the guy can still use it. And, uh, and where the stickers are, will they, they create a permanent stain in the board? Um, on the top couple of layers, it does usually. Red rock continues to grow. Even after the tree's cut? Even after it's on a board. board. Yeah. Okay. So you could build a, a camp some summer, leave it for the winter, and come back and couldn't find it. it was well, it wasn't that fast. Very fast. slow, but... Okay. See, like, we even use... Like, these are just old pulp logs uh, that we get, people bring in, and what we do with those is there's a lot of waste to them, but we turn them into two-by-fours. And that goes piles up there. There's five rows each one, there's hundred of them in each one, we, and we run a special on those. See how the sun is curling the, these top boards up and stuff like that? And that, that hadn't been there only a couple days, probably. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But the ones on, underneath there are still pretty good. Usually it's just the top roll will, will yeah, curl nice. and twist a little. But then what he does is when he's making these buildings, 
where he's got it where it's going over the door or uh, over a window or stuff like that, he's cutting it in short pieces. Yeah. So it still works for him. The trim is what makes those buildings nice. I yeah, the, yeah. The doors and the windows and the shutters. And yeah, and he uses all real nice uh, metal roofing on them. Yeah, on, roof, a roof, lot roof. of them. Yeah. We're gonna get a, a thing that goes on the mill for making uh, lap siding and wooden shingles. Oh, yeah. 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 And then he's he wants to uh, use some of that too. Now, what are you gonna make the shingles out of? Uh, spruce. A lot of it's going to be spruce. Okay. You can't get the cedar. Yeah. Now, so. okay. now, an important thing with the with the pine lumber is to have what's known as what, a red knot, a, a live knot, as opposed to a black knot. Yeah. And uh, black knot is a comes from a dead limb, and the tree kept on growing around it. Yeah. And if anybody's ever run a board through a bench saw and you saw into a black knot cutting through it. When you get through, the knot's going to be on the floor because it'll, yeah. it'll fall out of the board. This is yeah. nice quality stuff right there. That's Learning. real important too with our with the with the flooring guy that we sell to. Those can't have no black knots, sure. not even small ones, because you know it's you know, they're expensive floors. By the time it's all done, it's got to be good wood. So it's with any uh, type of material, it, it takes a trained eye to know what. It's good and bad about yeah. something. To, to people, a board's a board. Yeah. You know, but there's good boards and bad boards. Yeah, there's a lot more to it. Yeah. Well, here's some black knots and some red ones on the yeah. Jason boards right there. I mean, this is a knot that's going to be nice and tight, and there's one that could end up falling out. I don't know what the other side looks like, but it is what you really like. Yep. Like to see it. Yeah. Small. And yeah. These, like. Uh, six inch boards like that are make good trim boards. Yeah, those are real nice super good quality lumber right there. How, uh, we, we've mentioned many times what a board foot of lumber is, right? One inch thick, 12 inches long and 12 inches wide, mm -hmm. or two inches thick and half the other. Whatever, yeah. Anyway, mm -hmm. it's a volume measurement, really. And how, how many board feet can you saw a day here? Um, with both mills going, with Jamie and I both sawn, we can we can do between 2,500 and 3,000 feet. Um, and if you take a big certain saw mill, uh, like Bear Paw, Dorset, they do what? I always yeah. it's around 12. Yeah, they 12, they average between 12 and 14. 14. Yeah. But that's for the lot. A lot more equipment, a lot more people. Uh, yeah. yeah, that's a yeah. slam bang. Production. This is just a small family operation. Mm -hmm. Well, that's uh, good because we got some two by fours over here that, that were made out of pulp blocks that otherwise wouldn't. Yeah. Oh, that you can't even right get there. rid of nowadays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah there's stain in it. And uh, they weren't the straightest pieces to begin with either, probably. So, no. So you got more you waste. You got these the wormholes here, too. So, you know, if they're big enough, you, you won't have to drill holes to put your plumbing or wiring. Yeah, and it makes good. You stick wooden dowels in, you got coat racks. Yeah. We, you know, we run a special on these. Um, there's a hundred of them to a pack, and we and we, we sell those for $150. This is, we get a lot of spruce and stuff like that drawed in here. They got a, uh, a lot of your, the tree companies, uh, like doing park lights and things like that, where right. they take them down in people's yard and things, and, and they got to get rid of them, so they bring them over here for us. Right. Right. The only one bad thing about that, you find some steel. Yeah, you find a lot of hardware. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's expensive, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Richard, what's this stuff right here? This uh, blue stain um, is from the logs. You know, the, they were had been laying around quite a while after they were caught. They didn't get sawed in time. And that happens during the summer, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. yeah. You could you could store a log from October or September to May, and nothing will happen to it. But June, as soon as July. the heat gets to one day. And it can happen in a two or three day period. Yeah. Yeah. Real hot, hot days. Yeah. 
Nothing for, for nothing for if that's a structural piece of thing. It just goes in a wall. And yeah, so it, I mean it's just as strong it, as it. Yeah, as if you cut it when it was fresh sawed, but it's just you know it's discolored. Yeah. And a lot of people really like it, especially with wide boards, because it gives a board different character in, in floors and uh, stuff and right. and on walls. We have it in our house on, on the walls. Well, that that sure is a nice smooth cut and uh, quite easy to tell the uh, <coughs> the uniformity of size by yeah. looking at the pile. Where I mean, it used to be a lot of the, the small mills. Uh, I, one in particular I can think of I used to call the Thick and Thin Lumber Company. <laughs> and I remember planing a board that came out of it one time and and it uh, for quite a ways it didn't even touch the board. The planer didn't. And before we got the other end, it stalled the planer because you're taking off more than you were leaving. It's just uh, well. Before we go on the mill, Richard, how many times a day do you change your blades? Before we um, ask some questions. A lot of it depends on what we're sawing. Yeah. Uh, sawing pine, we have to change it a little more often because of pitch or well, not so much that is that's involved in it, but the it's, the blade starts to get wood dull. And the pine, the wood itself is so soft, and the knots are so hard, when you hit the knots, it'll dive on you. Okay. And it'll leave divots in the wood, so you have to change a little more often. Um, as many as three times a day. Okay. On each one? Yeah. Okay. And uh, when we're that sawing hemlock... Long, does it? No, about five minutes. Okay. And hemlock a little, you know, uh, twice a day. And I've sawed hardwood where I've sawed all day long with the same blade. Well. That's the opposite of what I would guess. Hardwood saws easier. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then there's the difference between frozen wood and... Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it, it slows you down and, and um, they don't cut nearly as... The saws don't go nearly as fast. If you try to go fast when it's frozen, then it'll still dip on you. And the frozen wood in the log, it's only part of it's frozen. Yeah. And that, yeah. that's... Yeah. The outside, depending on how big the log is on on the big pines, what we saw in the winter time, the first three or four inches will be frozen, and then when you get down into it, it's it's not. So, so you get two two different uh, materials in one one piece. Yeah. It's a big difference on how it cuts. Have you have you got some uh, some hardwood, sorted hardwood here? Uh, you no, I don't. Up too? That's all. That's all gone. But the thing that you're able to do with, with some of the hardwood, I think, um, that a big high production mill just can't take time out to do, you could take a poorer log and create top quality pieces. Yeah. Shorter yeah. pieces. And I think some of them at one time used to end up at Shush and Bentwood, which we did a program there a, a while ago. And, uh, a lot of it was 27 inches or something yeah. like that. Yeah. So. yeah, we saw a lot of cherry three and four foot long and took down there to shoot them down with. We sold them a lot of cherry. And a log, when it gets to that that size and things, uh, nobody pays much for it. No. But yet, if you take that little extra time, you can get just as good a material out of it. Yeah. It, of short. Pieces. Yeah, and for furniture, you don't you don't need yeah. long pieces. And or wider. Or, or, yeah. No. Well, let's go let's down and take a look in the mill. This is all stuff that will end up in the edger. Do you have an edger to it? Yeah. Well, I guess it is there. This is some of that uh, uh, pine pulp block there that we've, we've salvaged. And make, uh, they were a couple years, a couple summers. Uh, some of them are, yeah. yeah. Salvage some two by fours, some two by sixes out of them. Better not on the game wasted. Yeah. And there's some of the white stuff there. Um, 
got a little nick in it or yeah. something in the tube. And so that that spacing how how far it moved time that the yeah. blade went all the way. Yeah. Well, that's the same tube every time. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I don't see it down here. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay, you gotta, yeah, you got to get the yeah. shadow with it. Yeah. That's a, that's a blade that we just we just barely put it on so did you see that no it, it cuts good it's still you know it's, uh, it's fresh back from recharge it's still cutting good but it's just um, you send all your blades out yeah yeah right back to uh, wood miser and they uh ups spec them up here and we ship them out it takes about three days and we get them back wow Woodmizers, they're a great company. They, if anything goes wrong with the mills and we can't figure it out ourselves, I, I got an 800 number, I can call them, and within five minutes, the technicians there can tell us what's wrong or what, how to fix it. And if we need parts, um, we'll, if I call them by 11 o'clock today, those parts will be here 11 o'clock tomorrow. They have a real good tell you what we're doing here is Jamie takes and he squares them up. You know they come in logs on that side and he'll square them up and then we slide them across onto this mill and then I saw them down into boards. Okay. So all the stuff that has to be edged that he saws goes out that way and then the finished boards that I just done they come back here. And the reason we do that is because that mill the first mill is a lot slower. And so a lot faster and by cutting faster on the white board you don't get the dip in it okay. and uh that can, so that works good in the team then. Yeah. yeah and a lot of times like right now he has three cans ahead of me there and, but a lot of times i can saw one of his cans in another log by the time he gets one ready to been sharpened a couple times when we're sawing hemlock they'll they'll snap on us they break so then we're, we're through with them but, um, yeah usually you can get six to eight uh -huh. sharpenings out of them and they're just driven by the friction on a, on a wheel right? yeah yeah around no, a belt no gear or teeth or anything. 
No. How many RPMs does that go to? I'm not sure. Make up some numbers. Uh, 20,000. Oh, wow. They're, they're traveling. I never saw a portable mill work anywhere near that speed. No? No. Where all our firewood is done right here. Um, they, they do about eight cords a day. With, with one guy, just one guy running the machine. You've got the uh, splitting wedge we're looking at. It's called that, what, a six way? Yeah, that one's a six way. And you've got other ones? That... Yeah, we have a, a four way for it. It takes it's just a matter of a couple of minutes to change the head from one to the other. And what if the wood's dirty? Does that affect the. Is that just regular saw chain or is it carbide? It's, it's a regular saw chain. It's a, a 404 fit, so a little heavier. And the mud don't bother it too bad, it's, um, unless it's frozen. And then we kind of chuck them aside. And, and, uh, what runs the, the, the saw? That's a hydraulic motor. Yeah, it's a uh, Perkins diesel. So everything's all hydraulic. The, the saw itself hydraulic. Yeah. So right from that one one station, you can control the uh, height of the, the head, you can, the live deck to bring the wood on, and yeah. the fences, cut it, all types of things. Yeah. There. And uh, well, it, it's just a regular car antenna on there that you adjust for your, you know, it's got a turn screw on there, you slide it in or out for the different lengths of wood you want. You can do up to, uh, from 14 to 24 inch. Pretty much a one-man operation. Yeah. yeah. He'd have to stop down in and put, put some more wood on. Yeah. Yeah. When he's here alone, like when we're in the woods working and, and he's doing it, then he takes care of it all. But uh, when we're when we're you know we work here at least two days a week, and my son and I work in the woods, and uh, when we're when we're in the woods, he does the loading. But when when we're here working, my son takes, does all the loading. He keeps logs for Jamie and I on the mill, and, and the logs on the processor. And, you know, he keeps all the slabs out of our way and piles the lumber. And he's busy. He stays pretty busy. Too. How did you get the name Alligator? <laughs> that was out of uh, my granddaughter's um, little kid's book. She has. She's got these. My wife got them for her. There's a little alligator in there, and he looks just like the one on my hat. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I liked it, so <laughs> that's how we ended up with Alligator Lumber Company. And is that different? Did, they, did you catch that fish over there? No. <laughs> but what about the butterfly? Yeah, I made that out of a that was a piece of pine. It was a double tree, and when we Oh, okay. I, I, when I cut it down, we had to cut it high, and then I had to cut it off because it was right beside the guy's driveway. And so when I cut it down, I said, oh, that looks neat. So I cut one of those off. I wish I had cut a half a dozen of them. Pretty cool. One time I saw here, you, you were making a lot of real short, little, round pieces of wood. Oh, yeah. A certain size. What were yeah. they for? Those were for uh, Cabela's. Um, the fishing magazine, outdoor yeah. magazine. They were, they stamped the, the steel chainsaw emblem on them, and they went on the ends of the clothing racks for the Cabela's company. Now how did they find Richard Swain? <laughs> Through the sign shop in Manchester. Well, it's been very interesting yes, that's here. Yeah. Uh, you were surprised. Yeah. Yes, I, yeah. 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 And, uh, 